guys, Mike, your host of Craft Beer Storm. How are you today? I hope you're doing well. You're safe. The coronavirus is out there. Everything's locked down. It's affecting the brewing industry as well. And we got a couple stories for you, uh, some positive stories. Um, breweries are trying to survive this, you know. Uh, it's just it's frozen. They're shut down uh, in terms of their restaurants and their bars. But they are still selling uh, beer to go, which is good. And uh, so we have the craft brew news for you today. And these stories are courtesy of uh, brewbound.com. Great source for uh, news, beer news and other news. Um, Hey, if you haven't gone there, can you give us a rating and a review? Hey, I would appreciate it so much. Uh, five stars would be awesome. Just go on iTunes uh, or whatever platform you're on. Give us a just click on that rating button, and everything will be okay. Give me a review. Also, you know, if you want to, uh, you know, contact me directly, Michael at craftbeerstorm dot com. Michael at craftbeerstorm dot com. If you have a guest that you want on, I can get him on. We we interviewed three hundred and sixty in the craft brewing industry. And uh, Fridays are for Craft Brew News. So here we go. First story, Crowler cans are out of stock until April as beer industry pivots to go-to sales. Um, As craft beer is almost entirely stopped flowing in the U.S. due to on-premise shutdowns caused by efforts to stop the spread of the novel coronavirus disease, COVID-19, Craft brewers are turning to Crowlers, 32-ounce cans uh, filled and sealed in demand, to sell the beer left in their kegs before it oxidizes. So they're trying to get rid of this uh, beer. Beer doesn't stay in in kegs and and tanks forever. You have to sell it by a certain date, so they're trying to move it. And 32-ounce cans, I guess, are the best way to get it out there. Um, They're very popular. Uh, People love them. but the problem is that the only supplier of Crowlers, the Ball Corporation, is entirely out of stock of Crowlers until April. Um, but Ball manufactures Crowlers quarterly, and the unprecedented shutdown of all on-premise consumption in the U.S. could not have been forecasted. So they're just trying to manufacture stuff according to past sales, but now, boom, everybody wants them. But the next story is, is positive because Ball, Ball Corporation increases Crowler production. To meet demand, they're like, "Look, everybody wants, it needs these things. Let's crank them out." And then also, growler sales surge. Growlers are, are glass containers; they're thirty-two ounce and sixty-two ounce containers uh, made of glass. So, Ball Corporation has added production of thirty-two ounce growler cans and expects to have a supply ready to hit the market in two days. So, the, hey, ball's coming through. The company, which is the nation's sole provider of 32-ounce Crowler cans, increased the size of the planned second quarter run and is working to expedite shipments when possible. I guess they have a patent on it? Why are they the only ones? I'm confused. As states have forced bars, restaurants, and breweries to close for on-premise service during the COVID-19 pandemic, Crap breweries whose tap rooms are the main source of revenue have turned to, to go-to sales of cans, growlers, and crowlers to stay afloat. However, the shortage of crowler cans, which Ball is the only maker of the nation, has hampered those efforts. Meanwhile, sales of glass growlers from wholesaler glass and growlers are cranking. Chief Operating Officer William Kerr said, Las Vegas, Nevada-based company has received orders from as far away as Europe and Australia. And domestic orders are coming from clients ranging in size from small craft breweries to national craft-centric chain yard house. Chris said the yard house is selling them to go. Growler sales are going through the roof, he said. Uh, we're not. We're on our second truckload this week. I saw I was in Brooklyn and... Apparently, one of the bars had the big like front that opens up. So what they were doing was just like blocking off the front. But the bar was open, and then they would just hand pints to people outside, and then they would drink them on the sidewalk. I don't know if that's legal or not, but they were doing them. So I guess that's a way around it. You know, if you can't go inside, drink outside. Put a rope around it, and I guess that that's okay. You know, maybe maybe these uh, tap rooms should do that. You know. 
block it off. Just hand it through the door. <laughs> drink, drink it outside in your patio. Man. Next story. Allagash donates personal protective equipment to the hospital. And Portland, Maine-based Allagash Brewing tweeted that its staff discovered extra safety masks, which the brewery donated to the Barbara Bush Children's Hospital at Maine Medical Center. That's a good gesture. The brewery has been delivering beer directly to consumers in the Portland area. On an Instagram post, uh, the brewery said, Allagash on the fly will continue to operate both curbside pickup and delivery as Portland begins a mandatory stay-at-home period. We continue to add to our safety measures across the brewery, both for our staff's well-being and yours. So there you go. Allagash is uh, coming through, giving those uh, extra safety uh, masks. That's a great gesture and figuring it out. Deliver to people. People can't come in, you go to them. Last story. Beer companies donate to bartenders and restaurant staff. Another great story. Molson Coors Beverage Company is announced to no, donate $1 million. The United States Bartenders Guild, a nonprofit organization that supports bartenders and servers. I mean, these guys are out of work now. You know, no people are allowed in. What are they going to do? Uh, other brewers making uh, similar donations include Boston Beer Company, which donated $100,000 to the Restaurant Strong Fund, a fund that it created for Massachusetts service industry employees with local philanthropy uh, the Greg Hill Foundation. Boston Beer will also match donations up to another $100,000 through March 31st. So make those donations. Constellation Brands, parent company of Mexican import brands, Corona, Modelo, and Pacifico has pledged $1 million to the National Restaurant Association Educational Foundation and $500,000 to the U.S. Bar- Bartenders Guild and 250000 to first responders. So that's pretty good. Constellation Brands coming up, coming through. Awesome. New Belgium Brewing established the New Belgian uh, Brewing Bar and Restaurant Relief Fund and donated an initial $50,000 with a commitment to match donations up to another $50,000. The fund will support furloughed and laid-off service industry employees in the Fort Collins, Colorado, and Asheville, North Carolina, where the company has breweries. So New Belgium coming through, too. Great place. Kim, if you're out there, i got to get you on the podcast. I don't think you're probably not doing anything. The brewery shut down. You got to come on. I'm trying to get her on. I mean, I'm calling the uh, office there. I got to call them again. I can't get her on. Anyway, that's your crap brew news for today. Please be safe and don't panic. Um, you know, we it seems like we got this under control. Looks like it. And, um, you know, uh, this too shall pass and we'll get back to normal. Our breweries will open again and we will thrive as the beer drinking nation that we are. Okay, take care. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on Monday.